welcome back guys so today i will be doing my june wrap up where has the year gone how are we in july now i'm not emotionally ready for july whether i'm emotionally ready for it or not it is now july so it is time to do my june wrap up i read a total of 13 books in all honesty i kind of thought i'd read more Especially because a lot of these books were for specific videos, so I kind of feel like it doesn't count. But 13 is pretty good. Right, so to start the month off... I Wait, these are the wrong way around. Sorry, that's gonna bug me. Yeah, I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy. This is such a fun series. I know I'm really behind on this, but I had so much fun. This basically follows a young girl and... She discovers she has powers at a much later age than everyone expects her to have powers. You know, the kind of usual YA fantasy trope. And she goes to a school setting and then realise everything like isn't as it seems and... You know, just again, usual YA fantasy. This is just really fun and really gave me like Magician's Guild vibes. This, if you like the Magician's Guild then you'll absolutely love this and if you love this then you'll like the Magician's Guild. Yeah, that's how recommendations work, Paige. And as I said in my mid-year freakout tag, the Darkling in this book was just so tasty, so yummy. We love the Darkling in this. He gets a bit weird in these ones, but in Shadow and Bone, he's just good fun. Um, I will say, I think the world building was kind of poor in this book, but it did get better, even though I did find myself quite confused about some of the elements in this world. I don't think it really hindered my enjoyment or my like overall understanding of the plot. I will also say that I found Mao to be a really dull character and I was like disappointed that he was such a key person because he was just so boring. Like I want to say he was so vanilla but that would just be a bit rude. He's just dull and boring and I felt like he had no personality and I wasn't a fan. Ruin and Rising was a little bit of a disappointment like ending wise. I didn't particularly like the ending of this. I don't know why some fantasy books do this ending. It ma makes me wonder what was the point in learning all the stuff that I learned for that to be the ending. The next book I read this month is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, and I've spoken a lot about Morgan Matson on this channel and I can now say that this has become my favourite Morgan Matson book. It was so cute. So this follows a young girl Andy and her dad's a politician and she like has her whole summer lined up. She's gonna be away doing some kind of academic course and she's got her whole life planned out basically. And then a scandal happens with her dad and the person who wrote her recommendation pulls the recommendation so she's left with nothing all summer and the only option she has is to stay home with her friends and be a dog walker and it just basically follows her like figuring life out as she goes and friend drama happens and family drama happens and it's so sweet and so good and there's dogs and the dogs actually play a key role which I appreciate. The next book I read this month was The Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan this is the second book in the Heroes of Olympus series and unlike the first book, this follows Percy and his, the friends that he makes at Camp Jupiter. I didn't enjoy this much as the lost hero. Reading as Percy who doesn't know anything but we know everything, I just found to be infuriating. I couldn't wait till he figured out everything that we knew so we could get on with the plot basically. Uh, the next book I read this month along the lines of that was The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. This book is by far my favourite of the series for, so far and I hear that they just keep getting better. This was absolutely amazing. So this is finally, we're getting on with the plot. We're going towards the end game of this series now. The two teams have joined up and they're on their way to Europe and we're finally getting what I want. So the next two books I read for my first Doing Something Stupid video, which is a video where I challenge myself to read books outside of my comfort zone for 24 hours. To summarise, this was a two star read, this was a five star read. Now the next book is an audiobook and that is Mythos by Stephen Fry. This was an absolutely fantastic audiobook and I think I would actually recommend the audiobook over the physical copy because Stephen Fry's narration is just amazing. He really brings them to life. It's also a great introduction to mythology in that Stephen Fry doesn't try to analyse the myths. He's literally just retelling them like stories. It's almost a work of fiction. Okay, and so the next two books that I read were for my second Doing Something Stupid video where I challenged myself to read Smutty Romances and they are Cruel Prince, A Lesson in Thorns, Oh my god, I've forgotten the third one. How can I forget a book that I've read like, recently? Cruel Prince, I absolutely adored. Cruel Prince was basically a high school bully romance 
girl moves back home, this guy that she used to be friends with is now bullying her. I talk more about it in my video. And I'm gonna shamelessly self promo it because I'm proud of that video. And yeah, this was just everything I wanted out of reading those books. A Lesson in Thorns was the book in that video I really didn't enjoy. The romance I think was good and it's a poly romance, so I definitely did enjoy reading about that. It just the actual overall plot was boring. Only for One Night is like 150 page. Pure smart really. And the 13th and final book I read this month was Battling the Gods Atheism in the Ancient World by Tim Whit Whitmarsh. This was good but I don't necessarily recommend it. It was quite inaccessible and I like to think I have quite a lot of prior knowledge. This is kind of written as a thesis and is aimed at lecturers and people who are already in this field and know what they're talking about but I, that's kind of what you can expect from such a niche down book. This is about evidence for atheism in classical works. So it's not just like an introduction to classical works, it is a very specific thesis basically. Yeah I ended up giving this a three stars because I did enjoy it but it dragged on a bit and quite inaccessible at times. And here is my very big pile of the 13 books that I read this month. I'm gonna keep pushing myself to try and read more but overall I'm fairly happy with this. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. There's a lot of bookish content on this channel. I upload twice a week, so there's no shortage of it and there's not going to be for a very long time. Fingers crossed. Let me know if you enjoyed any of these books, if you've read them, if you've watched some of the videos that I talked about them in and what you thought. And we can just have a book conversation about it. Don't you just love book conversations? I know that's why I'm here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.